It's an amazing way to tune your mind into everything that's going into your body, finding that central focus point, finding your balance point, but then fine tuning every bit of those muscles that you need to get into some of these postures. So today's guest is Derek Sabori. Derek's one of two co-founders of this really cool startup in California called Cosm. And Cosm makes a killer pair of yoga shorts that I had the pleasure of coming across during the pandemic while spinning through Instagram. Anyhow, one of the cool things is they're a certified B Corp. And if you don't know what a B Corp is, these are businesses that meet the highest standards of verified social environmental performance and legal accountability to balance profit and purpose. And you're seeing a lot more of these these days, especially with startups and even some bigger companies like Patagonia. Derek and I have a great conversation. We talk about how he got into yoga. We talk about his life growing up surfing, but particularly how he got into yoga to deal with the injuries stemming from his martial arts practice. And we talk a bit about the fact that yoga has become such an integral part of his life. And then towards the tail end, we talk about Cosm. And these are shorts I really highly recommend. They're just a cool feel, a cool fit. They're 55% hemp. They're 40% organic cotton with a little bit of lycra. And you know what? They're just different. They're different. And the more that I wear them, the more comfortable they feel. And I can't recommend them more to anyone out there who has a yoga practice or looking to start one. Anyhow, thanks for listening and enjoy the show. Well, Derek Sapori, great to have you on the show and thanks for joining us. Thanks, Derek. I'm glad to be here. Really excited. Let's do some talking about yoga. Well, first of all, it's great to finally connect because going back a year ago, I was coming off the heels of doing a yoga teacher training in San Francisco when COVID hit. And somewhere around that time, I was sort of looking for another set of yoga shorts. And I bought a couple pairs of Cosm shorts. And I think you dropped me a note afterwards, knowing that after I had purchased or you reached out and said, trying to verify, how did I come across you guys? And clearly your investment Instagram (laughs) had worked. So we go back over a year. I know we just traded a few emails back then, but it's great to finally connect over video and great to have you on the show. So thanks again for joining. Absolutely. No, I'm excited. It's been a fun story and it is really fun to be connected here. So how, when, and where did you get into yoga? Man, you know what? It's been a fun journey. And to me, my yoga journey is what led me into being an entrepreneur. But for me, it started when I was working for an action sports company called Volcom. It's based out here in Southern California. It's a brand that is focused on surfing, skating, snowboarding, art, music. First brand back in the 90s, 1991, actually, to bring all of those things together. And I had worked there for years and I was getting injuries. I've been a surfer since I was a kid. So I've always been active. I was a soccer player. So I've always been athletic and really involved in sports and staying fit. And as I was getting older, I turned into martial arts and martial arts was injuring me a lot. And my doctor suggested something like yoga. He's like, why are you putting yourself through these classes and sparring with young guys? Why don't you do some yoga or something? So that was to rehab. And I was like, I kind of rolled my eyes. And then sure enough, there at Volcom, they were offering yoga classes during lunch. And I took it. And at first, I was really just like, that was great. Felt great. And then I saw another guy that I actually really respected out in the water as a surfer. Really good surfer, good artist. And I'm like, wait, why is Jason so good? Ends up it was his girlfriend that was teaching the class. But he had been doing yoga for a long time. And I'm like, wait a minute. Is that what fuels his drive as a snowboarder and a surfer? And it just sort of clicked for me. I'm like, I think I want to give this thing a go. So from there on, I just sort of dove in and just started learning all I could about yoga and and putting myself to the test. So it's interesting. I think your reaction to the idea of yoga is probably not unlike a lot of guys who were like, wait, yoga? It doesn't even seem like even when someone mentions it to them, it doesn't even really pop on the radar. And it's almost like, I just don't even see myself doing that. A lot of guys do see other guys doing yoga and realize this is something I could be doing. Sounds like that guy clearly made an impact on you and you had similar values as that person and similar interest. So what kind of yoga did you get into soon after kind of making that connection? Really just vinyasa flow was my first introduction, was just sort of flowing through that vinyasa style practice. And I like that you said you didn't see yourself. And that was it. I didn't see myself doing yoga until I saw myself and somebody else doing it, right? I'm like, wait, that is me. 
And so after I was taking these classes at lunch, I would do one after another, one after another. And I found myself actually pretty good at it, I think. I was like, wait a minute, this actually fits me. My body style, everything, I was able to progress pretty quickly. And I also love Shavasana at the end and just the relaxation, the way you push and sweating and the up and down and the staying constant. When I was doing martial arts too, I was doing a lot of jujitsu training as well. And so just this idea of learning how to breathe through the pressure and the pain and the poses and the asanas and like staying calm. It's that same thing we need to do in martial arts, right? It's like stay calm, try to figure out what your next move is. So I had all these emotions of like staying calm and surfing in critical situations and learning to control the breath and staying in that even playing field as your body is heating up and ramping up and like trembling and shaking. So I explored a few different styles online. I wasn't ready to go to a studio yet because I didn't feel comfortable yet. So I found a guy online. His name's Tim Senesi. And I specifically was looking, to your point again, for a male yoga teacher. I just wanted another guy. I wanted to see myself in somebody else doing yoga. So I somehow found him. He's a surfer, skateboarder, Southern California lifestyle. I'm like, there he is. Really good teacher, great online teacher. And I just went through course after course after class after class and watched my practice really progress. And I was doing this late in the evenings at home after work. And man, I was addicted. Like, I mean, it was like every night practicing, practicing. And his style too is a fusion, maybe a little bit of Ashtanga asanas in there, but mostly just a vinyasa flow core workout, a little blend of everything. So nothing too specific, more just kind of a freestyle, if you will. If you recall, going back to those early days of doing yoga vinyasa flow, do you think a lot of your first reaction was, this is harder than I expected to be? The fact that in the beginning, it's very physical. Did you sort of get that reaction first as far as your early days? I did. And I think that's also what hooked me at first was that physical challenge of it right? That idea of like, ooh, this actually is really hard. It's not just stretching. There are a lot of the poses and the asanas are very difficult, or we make them out to be very difficult at first, right? And we're pushing ourselves harder and we're challenging ourselves. And my first thing that actually hooked me even deeper was trying side crow. This is my kind of go-to story because I was going through each class, going from the easier one to the middle one to more advanced classes, And eventually in one of the videos we get to, he's like, okay, reach over and we're going to do side crow. And I watched him twist over, lean in, go right up so effortlessly. And I'm like, okay, well, I've been doing this now for a couple of months. And I remember just feeling like that's impossible. It completely felt like there was no way I would ever be able to do that. And so that was a challenge for me because I remember just feeling so awkward. And how do I feel so weak? I've been advancing so well. So I kept doing that video over and over. I'm like, I got to get this. I want to do it. I want to do it. And I mean, it felt like probably weeks, maybe a month or so before one day, one night came back to that video again, twisted over, got everything set and just like fell into that side crow pose. And that effortlessness was there. And for me too, that was going back to jujitsu where it's like, it shouldn't be hard. If it's too hard, you're doing something wrong. And I remember just like, oh, there it is. There's the balance, the strength. And I was like, I fell in love right there, man. That was beautiful. And so ever since then, yoga has been my jam. It's been my go-to. So for those who are listening who don't know what crow is, let alone side crow, can you kind of illustrate and walk through what it looks like and then maybe talk a little bit about what were the challenges in trying to get your body into that posture and speaking a little bit to maybe that journey on how you eventually got there? Yeah, well, so in regular crow pose, right, if you're kind of squatting down on your haunches and you're kind of squatting, looking forward, you put your palms in front of you and pull your elbows in and your knees are going to go up onto the back of your arms, right, right above your elbows. And you're going to fall forward and it's like almost a handstand pose, but you're in a crouching handstand pose. Your knees are tucked up into your almost your armpits and you're balancing there. Yoga starts to get to this point where you can ball up really easily and you can twist in and get really tight. And at first, that can be really difficult for some of us. And so side crow is that same idea of balancing on your arms in kind of this tucked up position. But instead now, you're still squatted down. You twist over to your side. So both of your arms are pointing to the right, let's say. You tuck those down against the outside of your thigh while you're squatted. So now your knees are pointing one way, 90 degree angle, your arms are pointing the other way. And 
Now you put your hands down onto the mat and you lean over to the side that you're on the right side and you should be able to balance now your thigh onto the back of your elbows in this weird position if I'm explaining it well. And then lean into that. And now you're, again, doing this balanced hand pose, but your Mm -hmm. knees are pointed one way, your arms are another. And it's a really awkward pose until one day it's not, right? Because then you just easily fall over and lean. And it's a blend of balance and strength, stamina, and confidence in yourself that you can do it. And then you always, of course, then go over to the other side and do it as well. And and if you need to, then you can start playing with your legs and your, your legs can come out and open. And it's just all these wild variations. But I think it's a really powerful pose. It's a great description. It's like you're in plank pose, you're about to do a push up, and instead you basically do a squat while standing on top of your hands. I know for me, there's always the feeling of, well, are your arms and your hands strong enough to do it? But it's really like you open up your back, strengthen your abdominals, squeeze in, and just rest on top of your hands. And I think for all those asanas out there, those postures that are a challenge. And maybe they're a challenge because you have an injury and you're still working through it. And yes, some of it's physical, some of it's mental and kind of in in mapping out in your mind, like what do you need to do to get there? Like what do you need to do next? Yeah. And to bring this back to your earlier point about surfing and yoga, I haven't done a ton of surfing, but I was out in Hawaii for a lacrosse tournament 20 years ago. And me and a buddy of mine said, we're, we're in Waikiki, we got to go surf. Mm-hmm. So we went down to Waikiki, we got a surfboard. It was literally like 12 feet long. It was one of those things where anyone could get up on this thing, right? You couldn't turn it, but you could definitely get up, right? And so just being on top of a surfboard, you first feel like your feet are stuck to the surfboard. Like you're just like, you're gripping in with your feet. I think the first time when you're doing some of these standing poses, right? It's all about your feet on the mat. Am I slipping? Am I gripping? And there's so much else happening above the feet, above the ankles, on a surfboard, on a yoga mat, that is all connected to your technique and how well you can ride the surfboard or just the yoga mat. And so it starts to be a huge like full body awareness connection Mm. thing. And I think when you do something like Bakasana, crow pose, or a side crow pose, or whatever it is, there's a lot going on that's beyond just physical. And that's what I've always found fascinating about yoga is, right, all these tiny little elements of body parts, of muscular structure, of like joints and ways that you just didn't even think of, didn't think you could use, and you didn't even really feel until like the next day, like, whoa, I have muscles there? Like, why is that so sore? And so you're right. I mean, it's an amazing way to tune your mind into everything that's going into your body, right? Finding that central focus point, finding your balance point, but then fine tuning every bit of those muscles that you need to get into some of these postures. So it's amazing. Yeah. There's so much more than I at first realized years ago when I got into it. So we're both sort of in our late forties. We've got some lived experience in our bodies. How often do yoga now And we'll talk about Cosm, your yoga apparel company in a moment, but what's your practice look like now and and how does it help you just like navigating the world we're in these days? So for me, prior to COVID, I was going to a studio, going to practice an intentional practice at least twice a week, right? And working with teachers and I had my flow classes that I really appreciated. And then I would combine that with surfing. I also have been doing for four plus years now, Wim Hof breathing. I've incorporated that into my life as well. So I have a heavy breathing practice that I do. I was introduced to it by my co-founding partner, did some work with Brian McKenzie at first, who's a breathing coach and endurance coach. And then with Casper Vandermullen, did some online training with Wim Hof's courses. And so that is something that's become a big part of my life as well. So to answer your question, I start every day with my Wim Hof practice, with my breathing practice, which is a meditative breathing practice as well, and then uh, transition into a yoga practice. But it's not as now full as what I was doing, right? When I was going to a studio, carve out that hour, do a full flow, full practice from start to finish. And now I'm finding that I'm doing less of that, but doing it every day in the morning, And Mark Roberts, who was one of the early guys who came on and did some work with us at at Teacher, I remember one thing that he said, it's like, hey, you don't have to do your entire Ashtanga practice necessarily in one setting. You might do a little bit in the morning. You might come back and do the next part in the afternoon and come back and do the rest in the evening. And that actually clicked for me because 
I do that now. Once COVID hit and everything shut down, I changed the way I practice where every day, do my breathing, do a cold shower too. That's how I start every day, no matter what, no matter where. And I've done this every day, Derek, for I think four plus years now. I haven't missed a day. But now my yoga is in these smaller bits after my breathing practice. So sometimes it's 10 minutes, sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's five minutes. But I always make sure that whatever maybe I practiced yesterday, that I I switch over to maybe I'm on balance today. Maybe it's a lot of hip openings today. Maybe tomorrow it's twists. Maybe it's back to headstands and handstands. So all week long, I'm doing these bite-sized bits of yoga, but now it's incorporated like completely into my life, more so than like, oh, yoga's on Tuesdays and, and Thursdays. Yeah, well, you're ahead of me on the Wim Hof. I am reading his book right now, and I'm a fan of any kind of intentional breath work, because I think you're right, there's just so much that it affects, and I got to get cranking on the cold showers. But to your point about yoga being something that you can do anytime, anywhere, for any short amount of time or long amount of time, I think it's so true. And I think it's like, we're all going to be getting back to more travel soon. For those who are business travelers who are going to be traveling for a week in and out of hotels, there's some great travel yoga mats out there that are just can fold up like a paperback. They're tiny. Yeah. But you could do some of that in the hotel room. You don't have to deal with the packed little gym in these hotels, which are never good gyms. You could roll out your yoga mat in your hotel room, do it for 20, 25 minutes. And maybe it's not the thousand calorie burn you normally get when you do things back at home, but that's going to help you out with that trip. So I'm with you. It's like, it just looks different every day. And then when you're in the class, it's great to be totally committed to that studio class for 90 minutes and let the instructor take you to a place where you haven't done postures or certain flow sequences in a while. And that's going to be a nice change. Yeah. And I'll add on that because I used to travel a lot for work as well. And I did same thing. I had this really nice thin mat that fit right nicely in my small little luggage case. And I would roll that always out in the hotel room and our Cosm yoga shorts too. I know we'll get to that, but it's like for me having those shorts rolled up and the mat there, and I always put it on top so that whenever I unpack and unfold, I'm like, yeah, that's right. Let's get into just landed before I go and meet anybody down for dinner. Let's get in some stretching. Let's get in some breathing. Let's just get in some meditative space. And we like to call it like, just get on the mat, right? Just roll out the mat and have it there so that you can just sit down and just take a minute, right? So let's talk Cosm. Okay. So I'm a fan. So I I bought two pairs of shorts last spring, the green and the black. I love the fit. I love the feel. They felt very different than just your typical off-the-shelf Dick Sporting Goods shorts with maybe some large, well-known brand name on it that is just everywhere. And then I end up seeing you guys were rocking some navy blues. So I was like, I got to get some navy blues. And I bought two pairs of navy blues. And you hooked me up with a nice pair of the Warrior Two, the sort of the camo look print short, which I got to be honest, they're a little tight. I'm going to have to work on the yoga practice for a while to make those things really fly, but it's a great short. And I've mentioned it on Instagram, how much I'm a fan of these shorts. Tell me how you got the idea for Cosm. Yeah, sure. Well, it goes back to that yoga practice that I found when I was working at the brand Volcom, right? And one of my colleagues there, his name's Troy Eckert, he's a co-founding partner in Cosm. He had worked there at Volcom for many, many years as well. We both worked out together. He left the company, I was still there, So we were meeting up for lunches and we were just kind of discussing different projects that we could do or just brainstorming on some ideas. And we started talking about yoga and Troy was very into yoga. He still is deep into Ashtanga practice. And so he was doing yoga before I was and Ashtanga practice is intense. It's long. It takes a lot of discipline. And so I was doing a more free vinyasa in one of our lunches. He was like, man, all I think about right now is yoga. Like I love yoga so much and it's helping my surfing so much. And I looked at him like, dude, I've been doing so much yoga at Volcom too. Like I'm hooked. And so we just started talking and connecting and finding that, hey, we were both kind of doing yoga in our different spaces. He was uh, further along in his journey for sure. But then he eventually came back to me and said, hey, I've got this idea. There's a space out in the market. And Troy comes from a branding background. That's his play. Well, for me, I'm in sort of operations management and sustainability. So He comes with this idea that, hey, in the marketplace, there's a gap. More and more guys are doing yoga. They're surfers, they're skaters, they're artists, they're musicians, they're all walks of life. There are no brands that I can find. He was saying, I'm looking for a yoga short. I'm tired of wearing my board shorts because I'm getting better at it. I'm becoming more intentional with it. Couldn't find a specific yoga short that 
fit the aesthetic that he was looking for and that had the values of the kind of work we were doing that I was doing. People, planet, profit, focusing on what we call sustainability, responsible business. And he goes, hey, I want to do a brand, but I don't just want to make another brand. I want to do it better and I need your help. So I quit Volcom, went and helped to start this brand and sort of went on an entrepreneurial journey late in my life because I was a 20 year brand guy at this particular brand and said, yeah, let's do it. Tell me how you got the idea for Cosm. Tell us about Cosm being a B Corp and what makes these shorts so special. We knew from the beginning that we wanted to do business differently and responsibly. And for us, that means our mantra is made fair with care. And that's fair to people, fair to the planet. So we wanted our products to be made right, people to be treated fairly. And we wanted our products to be made of the most sustainable materials we could find, which leads us to the short. We abandoned and we tried to move away from plastic-based fibers and fabrics, which is what polyester and nylon are, right? Society is really kind of over plastic, if you will, in in wrapping and packaging and in products. So polyester and nylon, those are plastic-based fabrics. So we moved to a natural fiber. We used hemp and organic cotton, and that's blended with a little bit of lycra. So it has a stretch, but it has a different look and feel. But the performance, as you can attest, it's spot on. The fit Our products are made for yoga, but they're good for everything else. We want you to be able to wear them wherever and feel stylish and they look good. But on the mat, they're going to work as well as anything. And the first time we brought it to market, we were at the Ashtanga Confluence down here in San Diego. And that was one of the first times that we brought our products out to an Ashtanga community. And we were really crossing our fingers saying, hey, we hope that when they come to our booth and they buy our goods, that they come back the next day and say, hey, I used your shorts and I love them. I mean, we were like, this is the test. We gave a pair to Mark Roberts and he was for sure, we were like, oh my gosh, if he says these shorts are junk, then we are doomed because we had just launched. He came back and he's an Australian guy. He's like, oh, mate, these shorts are sick. And he's so stoked. Everybody that was coming back loved them. And we were just like, yes, high five, high five. Felt really good. So in a nutshell, that's kind of the journey. We knew it was based on yoga. We wanted it to match our aesthetic from our Southern California surf and skate snowboard lifestyle. We wanted a product that looked good, that wore well, that yogis would appreciate, but that looked good on the beach and on the boardwalk. And that was made sustainably and responsibly. And that's what B Corps are. B Corps are certified brands that are doing, we call it using business as a force for good. And whether that's good for society, for the community, for the people in your supply chain, for the environment, ecosystems, biodiversity, addressing climate change, all of that, B Corps are brands that are focusing on all of those and balancing economic sustainability with social and environmental sustainability at the same time. Yeah, that's great. I mean, these shorts, you're right. They're comfortable. They fit great. They look different. I think they're really cool. I think they're great shorts. I'm glad you guys are putting a product like that out there, especially being a B Corp. I think a lot of startups and even big companies are really realizing that it's not just good marketing. It just makes a lot of good sense to be sustainable, responsible for the environment, supporting the community, supporting local, Mm -hmm. social justice, all that stuff. And I think consumers, especially younger consumers, want to buy from those kinds of companies. Totally. So for anyone who's listening, I I recommend Cosm. So Cosm, K-O-Z-M. Tell us a little bit about the brand name. So the brand name is just sort of this open idea of cosmic, no specific meaning aside from we liked the kind of the two syllables, having kind of the weird letters in there. It just felt right when we mocked it up. We really liked the way it looked in copy and in the mark that we have. When you put the K-O over the Z-M, the O and the M, spell ohm, obviously. And then it looks like a head, a set of shoulders. So we're like, oh, there's a guy in there. There's a dude. We start off as a men's yoga brand. So it just felt right and it's good. But we use a lot of language like stay cosmic in a cosmic mindset. We're really focusing on this idea of finding your space. So our logo is like this little square. And that's this idea of like, hey, when you see that, like get into that space, whether it's on your mat or in a good headset, finding breath, finding a comfortable spot in your house, in your yard, under a tree to be in and erase the clutter, right? Like life is so chaotic and can be so busy, but all of us can find little moments to take to get ourselves in a good headspace. And a lot of that time that just comes with the breath. Yeah, amen to that. It's all great. And for those listening, go to Mm thecosm.com. You guys are also on Instagram as thecosm. Is that correct? That's right. And one thing I want to push on with the short, what makes it so unique as well, 
It's like a good pair of jeans, how they just kind of keep wearing it. And the more you wear them, the better they get, the more comfortable. Hemp does that. Hemp doesn't wear out, it wears in. So these shorts keep getting better. They keep getting better. Hemp also has built-in kind of naturally occurring antimicrobial or antibacterial benefits. It doesn't like to attract microbes and bacteria. So I tell my customers, don't wash your shorts. You barely need to wash them. Wear them, I promise, no matter how bad you're sweating, whatever you're doing, just hang them up somewhere and try them the next day and then do that over and over again. And it saves your shorts, it saves water, it saves resources, but it's just a fun thing. Yeah, and hemp's a fascinating plant. Not only is it super high in CBD, it's got a great benefit for the soil with phytoremediation. Mm. So it helps bring nutrients back into farmland, depending on the strain of the hemp and the climate and that kind of thing. But hemp can help bring soil back after it's been over farmed for other crops like soybean, winter wheat, and corn. So I'm a big believer in hemp. Yeah, and we have to be. And that's one of the most important things we need to do in terms of sustainability right now is regeneration, right? And soil regeneration and building back soil help. Absolutely. Soil plays a huge role in carbon sequestration and the fight against the climate crisis. So hemp plays a big role in that building back soil, sequestering carbon. It's a fast growing plant, doesn't need a lot of water, doesn't take synthetic pesticides or fertilizers. It can be grown very sustainably. So yeah, it is a really good fiber choice for sure. That's great. We'll tell you what, we're going to wrap here in a minute or so. For those guys who are listening, what's the advice you'd give them about, for those who haven't done yoga, gave it a shot, kind of never came back? What would you tell those guys who are listening? I would say yoga is something that you build it into your life, right? You bake it in. And this is what we even say with doing business sustainably. Like you have to ingrain it into everything you do. It can't just sort of be this add-on that we do. It's like, no, 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 it's part of everything, So yoga is a lifestyle. And I think that's why for me, I'm okay right now with not going and doing a 60 minute, 90 minute flow or working with a teacher because it's just now so baked into my life that I'm doing it kind of throughout the day intentionally. And I've learned to breathe very well and meditate and be in the zone and just stay healthy. But it has so many benefits for us. So one, in terms of as we get older, keeping our body fit, our core strong, our back strong, tuning in all of the little muscles and joints and parts of our body that we don't always use. But I think most importantly, it keeps us limber, keeps your balance in check as we get older. That's a huge thing. But most importantly, it's a mindset. It gets our mind into that flow of just like finding time for yourself to breathe and focus on the breath. And yoga is that union of breath and motion and movement. But essentially, it's just like finding a rhythm in your breath And you can apply that to getting through the day, getting through stressful events, getting through whatever it is you do, any athletic endeavor, any type of work. It's about coming back to the breath, staying tuned in and keeping your breath, your heart and everything, man, at just that flat rate while everything is going crazy around you. And you can't understand until you totally bake it into your life, like how beneficial that is in the long run. But it's one of those things that you don't just see over one month, two months. It's not until you've been doing it for five or six, seven years that people start to wonder like, how do you, oh my gosh, you seem so like, how are you so calm? How are you like, because I just do yoga. I started doing yoga seven years ago and I never looked back. That's how. And we just keep adding on to it. So that's perfect. I think that one thing I try to hit repeatedly on these interviews is you start a practice now in 10, 15 years, even if you're not a super dedicated, but you just start a yoga practice. For guys who are already in their 40s, you're going to be doing great in 10, 15, 20 years. And you're really going to be managing your body and your whole well-being. And you just got to get started and find a good mat and buy a pair of Cosm shorts Mm -hmm. and start your practice. Just get started and don't look back. Derek, it's great to see you, man. Great to finally connect. Keep it going. Love what you guys are doing with the brand, the shorts. And thanks for spending some time with us. Thanks, Derek. It was awesome. I appreciate it. And I appreciate your support of what we're doing and just give me a chance to tell my story too. So thank you. Right on. All right. We'll talk soon.